Uh, talk about it going right over us. Oh yeah. my That's god. Amazing. That's so sick. One in a million. Oh my god, how cool is this? Wow. Baby oh my god, this is crazy. <laughs> like, what? This, this is this is not right. Something happened. This exploded. This thing is exploded. No, I don't think so. Yeah, oh, absolutely. No. No. What do you see in the sky? Well, this was seen in Turks and Caicos. I got a good video. Yo. Some people said it was a meteorite shower and others thought it was something extraterrestrial. Are those shooting stars? What are those? Look up, everybody! Look up! We obviously need to go through all the data. It's going to take some time. In the next hours, days, we're going to figure out exactly what happened, come back, fly the next one, get even farther. Reminder, it's a test. It's a flight test. It's an experimental vehicle. Um, so we'll figure out what what ended our day today and make sure it doesn't end our day tomorrow. So uh, we're... <laughs> I, this is this is this is not right. Something happened. This exploded. This thing is exploded. We have the dust. Uh, All right, engine cut off. Engine startup. Most engines cut off. Down to those Tape middle separate. three. So we're looking good for that so far. Some great views there from the ship of Earth. That looks incredible. <laughs> Just like ship this silver normal. flare uh, coming back to the, the, once again, we are standing by for 
uh, uh, attempting to catch the booster at the tower. This would be the second tower catch. Booster landing, landing burn. See in 13 engines. Booster now hovering as it aligns with the tower for catch. Booster coming in. Get down ready to, for that boom, Kate. Down to three engines. And right now you can see some of the telemetry on those ship engines has gone out and we're waiting for an update on what our ship status is. Uh, we do believe that we have lost the ship during its ascent phase. It's uh, successfully separated from the super heavy booster. Um, but uh, at, during that ascent phase, a couple of the engines dropped out. And then shortly thereafter, we lost communication with the vehicle. So we are improve Starship's reliability. In addition, lots of videos and photos began being posted of the upper stage rannering the atmosphere in pieces. One video over the Turks and Caicos shows a mass cloud of debris burning up in the sky. The rud would have broken the vehicle up into many pieces, which then created this large grouping of upper stage debris. In theory, this will have occurred over the ocean, but in the near future, we should hear more about the exact landing location of the debris and what this means for future launches. In regard to how the loss of the ship may have happened and what the future looks like, at the end of the live stream, they were quoted saying, we were obviously bummed out about ship. It looks like we lost contact with it a little under eight and a half minutes into flight. That's roughly when you get to that main engine cutoff. We obviously need to go through all the data. It's going to take some time in the next hours, days. We're going to figure out exactly what happened. Come back, fly the next one. Reminder, it's a test. It's a flight test. It's an experimental vehicle. So we'll figure out what ended our day today and make sure it doesn't end our day tomorrow, he said. It's important to point out that SpaceX made a lot of changes to the ship going into Flight 7. Before the launch, in a statement, the company was quoted saying, A block of planned upgrades to the Starship upper stage will debut on this flight test, bringing major improvements to reliability and performance. The vehicle's forward flaps have been reduced in size and shifted toward the vehicle tip and away from the heat shield, significantly reducing their exposure to reentry heating while simplifying the underlying mechanisms and protective tiling. Redesigns to the propulsion system, including a 25% increase in propellant volume, the vacuum jacketing of feed lines, a new fuel feed line system for the vehicle's Raptor vacuum engines, and an improved propulsion avionics module controlling vehicle valves and reading sensors. All add additional vehicle performance and the ability to fly longer missions. The ship's heat shield will also use the latest generation tiles and include a backup layer to protect from missing or damaged tiles. They go on to say, the vehicle's avionics underwent a complete redesign, adding additional capability and redundancy for increasingly complex missions like propellant transfer and ship return to launch site. Avionics upgrades include a more powerful flight computer, integrated antennas which combine Starlink, GNSS, and backup RF communication functions into each unit, redesigned inertial navigation and star tracking sensors, integrated smart batteries and power units that distribute data and power across the ship to 24 high-voltage actuators, and an increase to more than 30 vehicle cameras, giving engineers insight into hardware performance across the vehicle during flight, they said. Based on the success with the ship in the past few test flights, it's likely that one of these new additions to the ship was the culprit something we should hear more about in the next few days. This afternoon, SpaceX launched Flight 7, and it was very eventful.